Hello and Hi. welcome to episode 310 of Bruce and Ed Live from New York. Welcome. I'm Bruce. I'm Ed. <laughs> it's March 10th. Episode 310 is a very complex numbering system. It means March 10th. Don't tell anybody. They're going to think we've had 310 episodes. Anyway, <laughs> um, today is Tuesday, March 10th, and you know what that means. Tuesday is body. <laughs> Health, fitness, nutrition, all those sorts of things. So, um, it, very fittingly, I have a cold. Mm -hmm. We were just talking uh, over the weekend with some friends who were saying, I was, well, we were out, it was like 60 some degrees, it was beautiful in New York, and I'm always hot, so I was like wearing a light shirt and no jacket at all. And um, later it rained, but anyway, during the day it was beautiful, it was gorgeous. And they were saying that, um, it's just an old wives' tale that you get you catch a cold by going outside with wet hair or because it's cold outside and you don't have a coat and things like that. And I'm just not so sure. I think that the new wives' tale is really an old wives' tale or something because if that's the case, then how come I have a cold? <laughs> is a cold caused by a virus? Who knows? Well, it has to do with your immune system. Yeah. And if you don't take care of it, then everything you will get sick. Everything happens. I mean, everything has to do with your immune system. But they say, isn't the co the common cold like one of the hardest things for us to cure and prevent? Because is it a virus or something? Well, yeah, it could be virus or bacteria. I don't get it. I really still don't understand how we all catch colds, and it it seems to always happen when the weather changes. I'm just saying, you know. Maybe it's just a big coincidence, but... Yeah, there's more stuff in the air, and of course, if your immune system is not prepared for it, then you will fall sick. Well, apparently that's what happened, because I fell sick. I, yesterday I was just sneezing all day, and um, then last night, oh my gosh, I had a fever, and I was tossing and turning it hot all night. And, well, it didn't help that the heat was off, and then I got up and turned it on, and it was too hot. But anyway, <laughs> um, what... Um, Yesterday, we put our first show, 309, up on YouTube, so that worked really well. We did the audio version of the pod as a podcast on iTunes. iTunes. So you can go to iTunes um, and just type in Bruce space Ed, do a search for podcasts, Bruce and Ed or Bruce Ed, and you'll find our podcast on there. You can listen to us on audio and subscribe to it there. Actually, and I did that, and it didn't come. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Wagner does. Well, no, I did it. It does. Oh, okay. Yeah, it does. If, you, do, if you go to search, if you go to podcast search, put Bruce space Ed, it shows up. Okay. Actually, there's two of them, and that's kind of a glitch. They're really the same. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter which one you pick, because one forwards to the other, and it's a, Apple, a weird Apple glitch, but it doesn't matter. They both are the same thing. I don't know how you can eliminate the duplication, but mm -hmm. anyway, there it's there, and if you click subscribe, you'll automatically get every episode downloaded to your iPod every time you hot sync and all that stuff. And actually, if you have an iPhone, you know, it's really cool because you, uh, you can download the podcast without ever syncing. It just does it through the cellular network, so that really is slick. Yeah, it just takes a, a few minutes to download um, the audio version. Now we're, we're almost finished with getting the video version of the podcast up there. So that was the a, last piece. Yeah, if you have an iTouch or an iPhone or whatever, the, the ability to watch a video podcast, you'll be able to do that too if you want. So that's cool. That's exciting. Yeah, it is. And, uh, we got it done at least. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's I mean, important. So, we don't have a guest lined up on um, Skype today, a guest host. So, if you have Skype and you want to join us, just type into the chat room your Skype name, and I'll call you up and, and get you up here on the, the big screen on Skype, and you can join us. Or you can just type in your comments or questions or whatever into uh, into the chat room. So, for as those of you that are joining us live, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the... Today, like I said, is uh, Body Day. The categories are money, body, love, tech, personal technology, and celebrity. So today's Tuesday, we're talking about money, which is everything related no, to... body. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, body. Everything related to health, nutrition, fitness, and things like that. Right. Which so happens to be one of my more preferred subjects that I enjoy talking about, mm -hmm. mainly because of, um, you know, I know a lot about nutrition, and, and we have a lot of great guests that are going to be, you know, joining us and teaching us a lot about diet and nutrition, etc. So what do, we, what do you have to teach us today about diet and nutrition? Well, I didn't have a whole lot prepared, mainly because uh, we're trying to focus this week on trying to get 
some great guests lined up for you for the next few weeks. Uh, so we're just going to kind of touch different areas of interest and of particular interest to me more recently has been um, like more natural foods, whole foods, um, raw f the raw food movement and um, and that is seems to be taking a big uh, up you know big stage in the diet and nutrition world because uh, so many people are interested in that kind of stuff so we can talk a little bit about that and um, and then about you know health issues and things like that so we've been um, we've been dabbling uh, oh Ed has been dabbling mainly in raw food, the raw food movement for quite a while. How long now? Uh, like two years. I mean, I have been for many, <coughs> many years actually. And uh, you know, as a truth student, I'm always seeking better ways to you know nourish my body and feel good. And as I get older, I you know I realize that I need to change certain things in order to keep my energy levels as high as they used to be. And so that's my quest. <laughs> so we we're not like 100% raw, vegan, organic, all that yet. No. If ever, but um, but we we eat pretty well. We like for breakfast. Um, actually, also there's this other thing that I really we both really got into. There's a book by Dr. Le Dr. Nicholas Paracone. It's called the Paracone Prescription, which is just about healthy, you know, eating and nutrition and so on. Anti-aging is part of the theme of it, and um, we really liked what he had to say about what was, you know, what was nutritious and all that. So right. we got into that. So we've been having pretty much very similar stuff for breakfast every single day. Like we have turkey bacon, um, scrambled egg whites, you know, and we used to every day we would have, um, you know, slow cooked oats and with berries or some sort of berries in it. But you get sick of it or something. Yeah, well, there was too. You know, <laughs> that's the thing. It was too much. It was actually such a big meal that it was too much. I wanted to split it into two meals. So now we kind of have the scrambled egg whites and the turkey bacon. But mm -hmm. as almost like a second meal, you can have um, a bowl of slow cooked oats, which is very very healthy. And then any not kind instant, of by the way, because instant cooked. turns into sugar. Right. There's well, there's like three kinds. There's like instant, and then there's the two minute or three minute or something, and then there's the five minute one. The five minute one is the one you want. It's the only one that's not you know super high glycemic and all that. The slow cooked oatmeal. Anyway, you put berries in it, like any kind of berries, but um, you know, for example, blueberries that have tons of antioxidants, and that's always excellent. And cantaloupe is another one that's um, extremely important and extremely healthy. So anyway, we've been kind of eating like that for a long, long time. Yeah. But now, for, wow, it's been a while. <laughs> long time. Now Ed is introduced into our diet um, green smoothies, which are um, that's from the raw food movement. Which yeah. you, what else do you put in there? Well, my goal was to um, in my normal life before I got into the raw movement, mm -hmm. I was or we were eating probably like. 20-30% raw, which I think is kind of low, uh, but that's probably where most people lie uh, as far as raw food a lot. For most, actually, more people probably have less raw food than that, but for me it seemed like not enough. And I wanted to kind of balance it a little more and get over that hump of 50%, so we've <coughs> incorporated a lot more raw foods into our diet to try and get over that hump of 50%. So my goal was to get like 60% raw. So that's where we're at and we seem to like it a lot. Okay, now we have to take our little YouTube break. So <laughs> we will be right back. This is the end of segment one. If you're on YouTube, just click <coughs> the link or there's a little arrow maybe right here. Anyway, click that and go on to the second segment and we'll be right back after the jump. And we're back, part two. Continue. We're back. <laughs> so anyway, uh, going back to the 60%, uh, anywhere between 50 and 60%, and lately I've been not doing that, not the not eating enough raw food, so I figured, well, let me sh shift things around a little bit because I need to get more raw food in me because I feel, you know, lethargic and not enough energy, and so I've been trying to combine the raw with the cooked stuff all in one as opposed to just cooked or just raw and uh, that seems to be working out 
somewhat, uh, you know, because then I'm more conscious about what I'm eating and I can easily tabulate, you know, at the end of the day, oh yeah, I think I reached my 50%, you know, for today, which is not a steadfast rule, but, you know, it's it's something, an, an attainable goal that can be easily uh, accomplished. And what are some of the things that you throw in that blender? Uh, well, for the smoothies, um, <laughs> You guys will probably not it, like this. I call it liquid salad. That's, yeah. what, that's what I call it. But it's super, super, super nutrition. Right. And that's what's important. It's yeah. If you think of it as medicine, just drink it. It's not bad, you know. Yeah, well, there has to be a balance, though, because most people don't like to eat anything that they don't like that doesn't taste well. So, um, so for me, it's very different because for me, I don't care about the taste as much. So I pack it with lots and lots of nutrients, so it doesn't always taste that great. And uh, and Bruce always gives me <coughs> um, a little bit of slack because of it, uh, but I always try and encourage him and tell him, you know, there's lots of nutrition in there, so you might as well just drink so it. So what are you putting in the blender? So I'm putting, um, <laughs> on a, on a daily basis. It's a secret. <laughs> yeah. On a daily basis, I mean, you can make things to your taste, of course, uh, but you just throw fruits in the blender. You can a lot of people use that are into this heavily are use the Vitamix blender, which is a great blender. But I just use my own traditional blender, and it seems to work well for me at the at this point. So I put like a banana, orange, uh, and some berries, whatever they are, whatever's fresh. And uh, the important thing is not to do the same thing over and over again. Is to mix it up a little bit and buy the, the fruits that are in season. So I'll put the apples, bananas, strawberries, or, ber or, or some other kind of berry. And then I'll put a little bit of water, or lately I've been doing a lot of coconut juice, or coconut water, and uh, it seems to, in New York City at least, it seems to be in every supermarket now, and it's 100% coconut water. Uh, it's better to have organic, of course, including the fruits. Uh, so I put the water and then I throw in whatever greens I choose and normally it's either collard greens or kale, spinach, um, uh, dandelion greens are excellent because they have a lot of uh, minerals and, and then I just blend it all together and then once that's blended then I throw in the powdered stuff which is the super dense nutrients uh, which uh, gives me the protein because for some reason for me it feels like I need protein all the time or else I'm always hungry so that um, that satisfies my my uh, thirst for protein or, what are the or powders? hungry. The powders are um, <coughs> the ones that I use I have a like if you come here you'll see a whole big drawer in the refrigerator of full of all kinds of great things but I do uh, uh, spirulina or chlorella, blue green algae. Uh, uh, the last couple of weeks I've been doing uh, alfalfa grass, uh, uh, which doesn't sound too good. It's kind of bitter, but it's an excellent uh, food. Uh, but you can do barley grass or wheat grass, of course, and I have that too. And then I add some other, like, those are the green powders. Then I add some other, like, barks and things like that are powders uh, like mesquite which the American Indians you know use it for everything and uh, and then in South America the Indians love this stuff called maca m-a-c-c-a -C -C -A, and that's come derived from uh, I believe a tree and it's a bark or something and it's a powder and and it's supposed to you know give you all kinds of energy and increase your libido and um, you know, just, you know, makes you very mentally clear and alert. All these com all these ingredients combined give you so, so much mental clarity. It's amazing because I drink this juice and then I feel like my brain is just like so like, I don't know, it's like this weird sensation. You kind of have to do it and then you <coughs> see what I mean. Like I can... I feel like my eyes are like very wide open and I can see things with better light and better colors and things like that. So those are some of the things. And then I put goji berries and I try and add some um, uh, like, um, like a neutral, um, like a aloe vera, like I buy the aloe vera leaf 
and then I put it in there or, or chia seeds I put them in water overnight and then put them in my blender with the smoothie I mean there's so many varieties that it's you know do you put all those powders in or just a few or yeah sometimes I put them all yeah because I want I want to be nourished and so uh, and and for me if uh, you know when I go to the bathroom uh, I want to see green <laughs> I don't want to see brown because <laughs> when I see green I know that I'm getting my all my greens in <laughs> Where does somebody, if you live in Ohio or you know Minneapolis or somewhere, where does somebody get all these powders? Where do they buy all that? Well, I buy my stuff in bulk because as you'll get to know me, you'll know that I'm very frugal and uh, I don't like to waste money. So I'm a good steward of money. <laughs> and uh, so I buy them online. Uh, there's different co-ops and I try and get all organic as much as possible because that increases the nutrient density twice fold and so mainly online but you can Where go to your local uh, website uh, well I go to there's a one that's well I get some of my stuff in different places like Vitacost is a good one because they only charge five dollars for shipping for anything and um, then I use this other one eastcoastnutrition.com as well and uh, and then there's a whole bunch of other ones that I can't think of but I mean, you know, I'll be sharing with all what with you. <coughs> what uh, should they Google to find these? Well, they can Google <coughs> uh, green, super green foods, you know, powder or whatever. Green right? superfoods, or mm -hmm. yeah, or chlorella powder, whatever specifically you're looking for. But how do you know that one of these online retailers or whatever is uh, reputable? Well, that's the thing you don't. So. Um, so if you find something that you really like, then you might want to Google that company, you know, and make sure that there's no negative, you know, comments. people, yeah, comments and things that people are saying about it. It's, there's no real sure way except getting it from a source like maybe me that I have some experience. And even me, like I, I don't, I go by what the other gurus are talking about because then I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I can just use what they do and there's so many new things coming into the market now with there's a whole new bec I think that's the reason why the raw movement has is becoming so big is because now we've uh, kind of minimized how much work it takes to get these new super dense nutrients into powder form or whatever with still without destroying it the food and uh, and keeping it in its most preserved nature and then and then you can they'll ship it to you and then you can eat it so uh, where ten, five, ten years ago they didn't have the technology to be able to do those things so things were you know it, more expensive so it's a huge movement now there are so many people getting in on it and um, lots and lots of raw food gurus if you just google raw food you'll find tons of websites and communities and yeah. seminars and movies all sorts of things yeah. about it so, all right, we're going to take a break and come right back after this little YouTube break. Um, click the link to go to the next part, and we'll be right back. See ya. And we're back. We're back. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, going back, I mean, we can talk. We can have a whole show just on raw food. Uh, but uh, <coughs> there's a couple of great movies right now that came out actually last year in 2008, and the one that sticks to my mind right now, for those of you that are suffering from like diabetes, is one that I would highly recommend. And it's called, uh, the, uh, what is it, Raw in 30 Days? How to Reverse Diabetes in 30 Days, I think it's reverse, called. Yeah, I think Reversing Diabetes in 30 Days. Yeah, and you can look that one up online. Uh, it's a great film on, they took like these candidates and that had diabetes and and for a month they put them in a, on a raw food diet and within like really 10 days most more than half of them already had stopped taking all their medicines mm -hmm. etc cetera, etc cetera. basically you can reverse diabetes and you can reverse most of the most the like heart disease high blood pressure diabetes uh, and a lot of skin disorders are all related to nutrition so you can reverse a lot of things by eating healthy. And the other one that I recently saw, which I think is excellent, is 
uh, one that's called Food Matters, and it's online as well, uh, and you can check it out. It's excellent, excellent documentary on why we need to eat right. Okay, so the thing that always uh, is always a question for me is how I don't cook, I don't even prepare food, I eat. So um, how can somebody in our um, modern American culture anyway, how can, what's the easiest way for them to do all this without a whole lot of fuss and muss? I mean, I know everybody always, you, you hear these people talk and they're like, oh no, it's so easy, all you have to do is go to the market every day, you know, and, <laughs> and all you need to do is get all these vegetables and they name 15,000 different fruits and vegetables that you've never heard of and you gotta, you know, put this with this and this and this and this and this and, this. and it, it's like, it's like somebody who had barely can operate a mouse and you're trying to explain to them how to program in C++. It's way over my head. I have no interest in doing any of that. I just want to pop the can and eat it or open the box and eat it. So that's a real challenge for somebody who's not into prep food preparation. They're not into cooking or anything, but they want to yeah. eat healthy and nutritious. What, what's, uh, have you c found any solutions for people like that? Yeah, I mean, there's no real magic bullet. I mean, it's like anything. It's how much you really want to change, and it's really up to you. What I can tell you is that um, that it, it takes less time than cooking, believe it or not, and less thought and effort if you already have the ingredients there. And I only go to the supermarket maybe twice a week to get my natural or my whole foods and vegetables and fruits and things. And probably every three or four months, I order things online from our powdered stuff. So um, what I would suggest is just uh, know what what these foods are, and then when you go to the grocery store, instead of choosing the Oreos, you choose the nuts maybe, <laughs> and uh, and then you eat the nuts, and you want to try and eat raw nuts if at, all, if at all possible as opposed to like something that's not cooked. roasted not salted yeah because you're getting more nutrients in general they say that uh, <coughs> conventional food um, loses a lot of its nutrients because of the soil that it's grown on and of course the pesticides that you're putting inside your body uh, but when you put or when you buy organic now you're getting say um, 50 to 60 percent of the nutrients that it should have more and then if it's wild then you're getting even more because it's not like farmed and so it's important that you spend 20 percent more on the organic stuff because you're getting twice as many nutrients and you're not and you're going to be fuller you know when you're eating these low uh, nutrient foods or conventional foods as they call them um, you're going to be hungry in a few hours and you're, because you're not getting the nutrition that you need. You get full because you're eating bulks of food, but you're not getting the nutrients. So that's why people in America especially are overweight because they're constantly eating bad food. <laughs> so why not go 100% raw food? Well, I don't know. I mean, everyone has their own <laughs> reasons why. I know for me, I'm a very pragmatic person, so... I can't just stop everything I'm doing now and start something totally new that I've never done before. That to me doesn't make any sense, but hey, you know, if it works for you, more power to you. I just can't do that. For me, it's been a very long and gradual process that's taken over 12, 15 years because I mean, I took many nutrition courses in college and and although I knew a lot about nutrition, it's been a very long process for me to make that switch to get to the point where I want to be more raw, 50%. So, um, so anyway, it's <laughs> it's it's hard. Yeah, it's, it's not an easy thing, but it's you, you have to make the decision yourself, and you have to and and just do it. Little steps every day is what ends up giving you perfect health later. You know, it's it's if you continue doing the same things that you're doing now, you know, twenty you don't get disease till twenty, thirty years down the line because you've been doing the same thing for twenty or thirty years. So now is the time to start changing those things, and then you see the results down the line. And it's you know, it's important to at least start very little. It's got to be hard when all your friends are not into that either. Like you're you know you're out in Manhattan and somebody wants to go 
let's go have dinner and they know this great Italian restaurant and you end up at an Italian restaurant with nothing there but pasta and, and steak and whatever. Yeah, that's probably been the reason why I won't go completely raw because I love to eat from these fine chefs <coughs> that are in Manhattan especially. They have a lot of great uh, foods to offer. So for me, I, I love cooked food and, and I need it. In, in my mind at least I need it so <laughs> uh, so yeah the, the thing about that is that uh, if you know ahead of time where you'll be going you should look at the menu and see if there's going to be something for you there if not then you need to eat something beforehand that and then just order maybe an appetizer or a salad something so you don't feel like you're depriving yourself and you don't make the people that you're with feel uncomfortable that they're eating and you're not so uh, there's a fine balance with everything and, and I think um, you have to use you know your decision-making process in figuring those things out but it's not that hard actually if you if you think about it if you know that what the foods are that you're supposed to be eating or that you want to start eating then uh, you know you have the mental uh, space to be able to look at the menu and only focus on the ones that are good for you we know a lot of people that are in this raw food movement already, and um, I know that I noticed that you know everybody's at a different degree. They they call themselves you know 40 percent or 50 percent or 60 percent or 80 percent raw whatever, and some of them do that. I mean they'll they'll some of them are completely raw almost. So they'll always suggest a raw food restaurant, and they really are really really into it. Others are maybe like 50 percent raw, and sometimes they'll order a salad and you know stick to that and sometimes they'll just have whatever they want quesadillas yeah so. i think it's important not to deprive yourself either and uh <coughs> so Maybe. for me i think in the weekends we tend to do a lot more social things with friends and we eat out a lot more so uh that's where i'm trying to balance it because up until recently i was kind of during the week i'm really religious about eating my 50% or 60%. On the weekends, I kind of let it go, which has worked for me, but lately I've just been not liking that anymore. So I want to try and do the whole seven days of constantly focusing on that because it's easy to let go and then just n to not come back to it. So, hmm. and that's the end of this segment. We'll be right back after Great. the jump. Yeah. Okay, we're back. That was a short break. Hello. <laughs> The question I have is, so what, what's, um, <laughs> I, I got sick, I have a cold, I have a fever, I feel like, you know what, what's the best remedy for that? Well, I mean, <laughs> like anything else, I mean, rest, and drink lots of water, and, uh, and then make sure you nourish yourself if you can. Some people lose their appetite when they're sick, so, um, it depends on on the person and what the symptoms are uh, you know I'm not completely against medicine or anything like that so when I do feel sick I, I might take some anti you know histamine or decongestants or whatever uh, so do whatever you have to do to make yourself feel better uh, what's important to me when I get sick is that I want to know where my body is when I'm sick so I want to be able to feel some of those symptoms to be able to gauge where I'm at in the illness. Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? And what happens is that people take all kinds of medicines and they mask the symptoms and then they continue on doing the normal routine and that's the worst thing you can do because you're not helping your immune system. You're depriving it of what it really needs. So the solution is nothing, just rest and water. Rest, lots of water, and uh, I would take some extra supplements, maybe vitamins, and and then get back to your normal nutrition. routine of nutrition, Super right? Superfood. Because mm -hmm. probably, you know, the reason you're sick is because you let one of those things go. You, you you didn't sleep long enough, or you know, you wasted your your resources in your body, your energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not enough superfood. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and you have to, you know, you have to love yourself enough to to continue to make the right choices for for your body really uh, and your health really from my understanding health really starts from in the colon actually 
which means that what you put into your mouth is the end result of what your health is. So, uh, so getting sick is a result of n prop not properly eating uh, the right nutrients and things like that as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I get sick, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect because uh, I do let go of some of these uh, rigid rules of, um, of engagement, I guess, that I use, but, uh, and everyone does, so it's just every day you gotta wake up and know what the right thing to do. Okay, so, <laughs> rest, water, nutrition, same as the rest of your life, basically. Yeah. Um, Everyone loves the chicken noodle soup, and, and I think those things just are comforting more than anything. And they, they do have nutrients, uh, but in general, when you cook food, it, it loses most, at least 50% of the nutrients that are there. I think the thing that usually when I get sick, I, um, I don't get sick that often, but when I do, it's usually always because I stayed up too late, working on the computer, doing something, didn't go to sleep till 3 or 4 a.m., mm -hmm. Then I wake up at 7 a.m. I always wake up at 7 a.m. with the sun. So if I am up till 3 or 4 a.m., especially if it's two or three or more nights in a row, and I'm getting only three or four hours sleep, that's what does it. <laughs> well, that, and you skip my immune. a lot of meals, I mean, yeah, and you're not eating the right foods. It's just, it can spiral out of control very easily. And, uh, and that's usually what happens with me when I get sick. I... I go on these sugar cravings and sugar binges, which for me, that's my downfall. And uh, so I kind of have to counterbalance that by eating uh, certain types of foods that that take away those cravings and and wantings. And for me, I think uh, some of it is stress. When I get stressed, I, I crave sugar a lot. Uh, so that's some of the issues that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, in upcoming shows on Tuesdays, we're going to be talking with, we're going to line up some really exciting guests who will talk about fitness and nutrition, um, a lot of people from the raw food movement and um, anything that's related to health, diabetes, you know, um, the epidemic of obesity and uh, all sorts of things like that. So we're going to have some really cool, exciting guests lined up for um next week and weeks after that so we hope that you uh, definitely stick with us tune mm -hmm. in it's going to be fun so what yeah. else did you have some anything else to say about well i wanted to maybe talk a little about uh, fitness um <laughs> the dreaded fitness uh routines and things that we should be doing on a daily basis and how to go about it and one of the things that i always tell people is um, that if you're not into working out, uh, then at the very least you should be stretching every day, uh, doing some kind of motion or activity where your blood circulates. You know, when you sit in front of a computer all day and you don't, like I'm always telling Bruce, you have to get up after an hour or two of being on the computer. You have to stretch and do something because your body needs to circulate the toxins out and so uh, I think that you know we can talk a little bit about fitness and and some of those aspects of how to go about it um, so stretching is one of the most important things you can do and I do a lot of stretching every day I stretch uh, but I love to do yoga because that's the ultimate stretch, obviously. You can get yourself into a pretzel, practically, and do all kinds of wild positions <laughs> that uh, can um, make people, like, freak out. <laughs> uh, stand on your head, things like that. But, you know, standing on your head is, you look at it and you're like, okay, why would I do that? Uh, but it's, uh, in <coughs> yoga, it's, it's a basic thing. You you do it because you want to circulate the blood. There again, you want to get all that blood rushing to your head, and uh, and that helps take things out of your body that you don't need. And so, if you're not doing anything at all, at the very least, if you don't want to get out of your computer, you should be doing stretches for your neck. And I always tell people to do, you know, rotation, flexion, extension. Going like this and just stretching it and moving things around 
um, I, motion brings life. Stagnation brings death. That's the bottom line. That's what my trainer always said. Mo it's all about movement. Movement yeah. is, yeah, movement is life. Movement is the key to life, absolutely. You Where can move. somebody find the best, you know, just ordinary stretching exercises they should do every day? God, with the, with being online, you, you have the world Where? of knowledge. I don't have really any particular place because I've learned most of my stuff on my own through books, actually. Uh, so um, I don't really have any recommendation for that, uh, but there's all kinds of stuff. Yoga is is one of the best things that anyone can get into uh, for your health. Uh, I practice, or I also get like acupuncture, which is kind of like um, you know reestablishing your chi, like they call it, which is your energy flow. Because sometimes even that gets clogged up and your body doesn't work right so stretching kind of addresses some of those things and so does acupuncture um, so and it's a holistic approach to health and uh, and and it helps me immensely and I sometimes a deep massage is great but acupuncture is like getting a deep massage but without all the deepness of it and pain of it after uh, but I know some people can't take the needles. That's the biggest thing that people mm -hmm. have to fear. But for some reason, for me, I don't feel them at all. It's like I, I just love laying there, and and I love the way I feel after and and beyond. It's not uh, a palliative thing. It's it's a long-lasting uh, effect that you get from yoga. I mean, from acupuncture. So it's a great, great modality. All right. Thanks for joining us today. Tuesday, yeah, we're gonna, March 10th. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna finish our segment now, and uh, yeah, thanks we're for joining us. We're gonna have some great stuff to talk about in the coming weeks. Join us tomorrow for Wednesday is um, love. It's love, sex, dating, relationships, all that. It should be fun. We're gonna line up some great guests, so it's gonna get more and more fun every day. Yeah, so stick with us, and we'll see you tomorrow. All right, take care. Bye bye. bye.